Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. You know, I say that all the time, and... Never gets old. I got to say, never gets old. I love love hearing my name. Okay. Uh, my guest today is Marsha Ball. Look, you know what this podcast episode has? This has, look, it, it, not to disparage any other perfor- live performances we've had on the, the podcast, but this, in my opinion, is the best performance we've ever had on the podcast. Live performance, okay? Beautiful. Marsha Ball is, you know, amazing. And she just, on a piano, grand piano, right there on the podcast, boom, boom, knocked out a song, and it was awesome. And she was just like, I I didn't even do it right. You know, it was like, what? So to her, it wasn't even her best. To me, it was amazing. (laughs) I think you're going to agree with me. It was always the best artists, the very humble ones, right? They're just like, oh, no, that wasn't very good. And you're like, your jaw's on the ground. You're picking it up. Like, what the? Can you help me with this? So... Yeah, it's amazing. That's what this podcast episode has. That's what separates it from the rest. Just the utmost amazing uh, performance. And look, this was a cool, I, I love, uh, you know, look, the relationship between Louisiana and Texas. It's actually very close, especially to the people in East Texas, okay? And we talk about, because uh, Marshall Ball is very, you know, she's from Texas, but she's got a, you know, uh, also Louisiana's her home, New Orleans, New Orleans, as they say. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, you know, anytime you hear me say something like in that Reginald Ball, uh, Reginald Ball, Reginald uh, Ballard uh, uh, episode, I'm like the fifth flow, you know, I j- just don't let me do that. Okay. I apologize. Anyway, Nolans, New Orleans, whatever you call it, NOLA. Okay. Uh, she's, you know, very well known, very famous. Look, okay. She's just an amazing, uh, she's got this voice. That's what it is, this voice. But anyway, we talk about look, a little bit of the history, the music of, uh, of that, and Mardi Gras, history of Mardi Gras as well, which is uh, very interesting, I gotta say, you know, something to look forward to. So, and we also talked a little bit about Uncle Walt's band. Um, we just did the episode with Uncle Walt's band, which is doing great. Just check that one out, please. Uh, link in the description, we'll have it there. Um, but she, she, you know, touched on that a little bit too. She was there during the time in Austin, you know, playing music during that time. So pretty cool. Got to say pretty cool. Uh, so she touched on that a little bit as well. Um, yeah, again, great episode. This has, again, the best performance we've, in my opinion. Okay. We've ever had on the podcast and just this beautiful grand piano there. Just amazing. Just, you know, really good. So anyway, wonderful performance. Marsha, thank you so much. You were amazing. All right. Before we get to the episode, what do I always do, guys? Okay. What do I always do? Yes, I talked to you about social media. Why? Because you should be on there following us, posting, commenting, sharing, hit the stories. I don't know, whatever, you know, we're on all the platforms. So please check us out, The Lone Star Plate or the Lone Star Plate TX, something like that, you'll find us, okay. And also on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit that little button, boom, brings up a little bell, I think, it notifies you, it lets you know when we got new videos coming out. And look, we're doing weekly, we got two new episodes that we break them down into clips, so if you're on YouTube, please subscribe, you get all that. All right, and the, the, you get the beauty of the discussion in the comments going on. And if there's nothing going on, start it. Start the discussion. Promise you people will follow. That's how it works. And look, we got a nice back catalog. So check out all the other great stuff we got on there. So as always, okay, before we get to the uh, interview, as always, we got an uh, awesome uh, word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. And please, you know, check out uh, the website. I promise you. 
there's uh, some great articles on there right now uh, about just honestly what what's happening with the mass mandate and just very uh, you know current and relative and, and what's going on and and follow them on social media as well they got a lot of great stuff I'm telling you please Texas Real Food okay so a word from our sponsor Texas Real Food and then the episode uh, with Marsha Ball all right enjoy. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. Okay. <laughs> I like to dance, I like to sing, I like to do my Cajun thing, but honey, what I like the best, that's mama's cooking more than all the rest. So how's the balance? Let me unmute myself. Uh, yeah, that it sounds uh, fantastic. Okay. Really, I'm I'm blown away by that. That sounds. And fantastic. here we are. Yeah, amazing. I think this is the first time we've had someone play piano. We've had a ton of guitar, ton of I don't know guitar. Really, I guess that's it. Everybody picks up a guitar usually. Uh, so this is fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, speaking of piano, I read your whole family came from. You know, they were pianist and instrumentalist and but I didn't see anything about like singing. So I'm curious how that how you combine these two or you just always were singing. No, I actually wasn't always singing. And, and you can tell by the, this voice, it's not like opera trained or anything. <laughs> um, I actually didn't sing a lick until I got in my first band or actually in college, my uh, friend who played guitar in the dorm, recruited me to sing harmony with her. Shelly uh, Collins was her name. And uh, she, uh, Shelly Carter, I'm sorry, Shelly Carter was her name. And she um, recruited me to sing Wow. with her. And that's the first time I ever did that. And so then not long after that, uh, I fell off into the world of the emerging world of hippies and uh, <laughs> got invited to be in a band a rock and roll band and that's really i mean i just walked out on stage with almost no experience and yeah yeah so when you were sitting <laughs> when, when you started saying like did it just come from an emotion i get right you just were like or why did she think for you to sing backup with her what had well, she had heard you sing i was okay. i had a guitar with we were i guess the only two people on the floor of the dorm that had guitars anyway and yeah so i just was her it, that's hilarious you were her right her right place right time yeah I love her it. desperation pick <laughs> hey but if she hadn't shelly shout out to shelly if she hadn't asked you you know maybe that's right. you know who knows what would have what would have uh transpired wow that's amazing that's that's amazing and so how so you're playing guitar you're into rock more first before you step into sort of I, you know, this, this new, what you stuck with, I guess, for so many years, uh, uh, later through, on or I stages, a, a, a very zigzag path toward where, where I am today. And I'm yeah. probably still zigging and zagging a little bit now, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a, that first band was a psychedelic rock and roll band. I mean, absolutely examples of our present time and place. We were covering Janis Joplin and, wow. um, and Grace Slick and yeah. Jimi Hendrix uh, with a little bit of Louisiana blues, a little bit of Slim Harpo thrown in there, a little bit of John Lee Hooker, wow. just enough of Louisiana influence to. Uh, to yeah, absolutely. Was that when you were living in Austin? Because I read this story that you were on your way to San Francisco and your car broke down and you're like, well, I'm here. This place is pretty cool. Yeah, no, I'll, we I'll were, stay. actually we were. <laughs> 
we were still in Baton Rouge. I was still okay. in Baton Rouge with that first band, just yeah. fresh out of, just fresh out of dropping out of, uh, of college. Oh, wow. That band. Wow. And then, yeah, then we came to Austin and we kind of kept playing rock and roll from about 1970, you know, for a little bit. But then I met some people here. I was really fortunate enough to meet a group of musicians, again, more experienced, which is what I had fallen into in Baton Rouge as well. And they were playing a kind of a mixed bag of country and blues and pop it, because that was kind of where we, our heads were at the time. Yeah. The band had influenced us quite a bit with all these different, you could, you could put all these elements in. Who was so that band? Who, who, what was the band? Huh? The who band. was that band? The band. Oh, the band. The band. Oh, the band. I'm like... and, yeah. And, and the Rolling Stones kind of moving into the, um, country doing their, uh, and Bob Dylan doing Nashville skyline and the Rolling Stones doing, you know, send me dead flowers and wild horses and stuff like that. Things were moving around and this bunch of people I met were kind of real representative of that sort of style. And I was invited to sit in one night and, um, at a club called the one night I might add. And, uh, <laughs> And I got, they put, they asked me if I want to be in the band. Wow. Wow. You must have impressed so them, then, obviously. So then for the next two and a half years, we played country music. We, wow. it was a bunch of long hairs in cowboy hats and Levi's and boots playing country music for other hippies. <laughs> but, but that was what was happening in Austin. Yeah. At that time. Was that around like uncle Walt's band time? Oh yeah. Actually uncle Walt's band came you know, in that in that few years, uh, the the band I was in, which was called Frida and the Fire Dogs, um, started in 1972, and and they came really soon after that. Right Uncle Walt's band has a real um, important place in my besides me loving them, knowing them, loving them, playing with them, loving their music. Uh, we were all blown away when when they showed up with their that record they already had made. And uh, wow. those songs and those wonderful harmonies. Wow. The whole music community was, was blown away and fell in love. But that record had a song on it by Professor Longhair called In the Night. I was going to ask you about him. Yeah. And I had never heard Professor Longhair. I had been in rock and roll in Baton Rouge, came to Austin, was playing country. His career, Fessa's career had you know, not been active in the time that I was growing up. And so they had found this song and they played it. And of all the songs, wonderful songs on that record, that's the one I said, what is that? Where'd that come from? And Champ Hood said, you know, laughed at me. You don't know Professor Long here. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard of him till, till I researched for this podcast. So I'm wow. like, I feel, I feel like I've, you know, awesome because I get to listen to all this great stuff and like, right. Like I got in on something yeah, late in life. Okay. I got to admit it, but whatever it, it, it happened. So I'm, I'm taking it in. Uh, so well, for those listening as well, there's going to be a lot of people that haven't heard of them and are going to now look them up and I, I and, hope so. I hope yeah. so. In fact, there's a new uh, recording coming out. The people at the club Tipitina's in new Orleans, uh, actually it's a band called galactic who bought that club recently and they're keeping the spirit alive and the, and the club alive. And they have a new recording of Professor Longhair. They just did a pod, wow. not a podcast, but kind of a Zoom yeah. uh, stream that um, people could watch where a group of New Orleans musicians, including Johnny Vodakovich, who played with Professor Longhair, uh, talked about his life and his music and his influence on everybody. And the fact that there's a, a new recording coming out of, of stuff that they have found in the archives. Wow. That is, yeah. that's amazing. You know, we actually, I brought up uncle Walt's band where we were releasing an episode, not this week, next week. I interviewed David ball. Um, uh, my ex-husband, not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Gary Nunn, Gary P. Oh, yeah, Nunn good. to talk about, their re-release of this Waterloo uh, record that they had coming out or yes. it came out. It's out right now. So anyway, yeah, yeah it was a great, yeah, that, that's another great episode along with this one. Uh, that's going to be great. Wow. Well, I love the connections. That's why I love doing this podcast. You find these connections 
uh, you know, amongst everything. So amazing. Well, I always waited. I waited for a long time and hoped for a con another convergence in Austin, which was that the Uncle Waltz band and the Lubbock songwriter guys, the Flatlanders, the Jimmy okay. Gilmore, Joe Ely, and, and Butch Hancock, were in both in, they were all in Austin and they were all playing, you know, like this. And then eventually they did this. And for a long time, Champ and uh, Jimmy Gilmore played together at Threadgills. Wow. And those, those people all melded and, and shout out to Threadgills. Yeah. Uh, you know, RIP. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sad. Somebody uh, just posted the other day. I want a chicken fried steak and some San Antonio squash. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so many great places. Um, you know, during this pandemic that uh, yeah. that came down in Austin. I just moved from Austin. I'm in Dallas now, but I just moved from Austin. I mean, literally just a couple weeks ago. I was there for almost ten years, um, and yeah, it was crazy to see just in that time. First of all, how much it changed, but then what happened during the pandemic of places that just started to close down I was like oh my god this is not good for the live music capital of the world if you will yeah uh, quote unquote we're holding so, our breath you know yeah. i think there's a light at the end of the tunnel right now i agree I with agree. the vaccines and so we're holding our breath to see who can open who can who has sustained and, and yeah uh, i see you got a few shows lined up right starting well, in got, the summer a lot of stuff that was um, booked last spring is now booked for next October, yeah. this coming October, uh, including a tour with Tommy Castro oh. and some dates with um, Sonny Landreth. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, yeah, I'm not really not pushing it, though, because uh, sure. yeah. when we do hit the road, I think we're going to hit it pretty hard. I think everybody is. And people and fans are ready. Let me tell you yeah. something. Fans oh, oh, are yeah. ready to cut. These oh, could be yeah. some these could be some of the best shows, honestly, coming up just for that reason that everybody's, you know, I've talked to so many artists who have said this is the longest period of time they've gone without performing their whole life, You're their kidding? whole career. That first month was the was the first time I'd been off for a month since 1984. Wow. Oh my god. And that god. was just that month. And then Did you you didn't even know what to do with the time, probably. You were like, I don't even oh, know. What I, <laughs> you know how it was? You just thought, okay, well, I, I can do jigsaw puzzles and clean yeah. off the closet. <laughs> and uh that, after about, you know, four or five weeks of that, you, you think you know, I could paint a house. I pressure washed my whole house. <laughs> I paint a house. I love, you're right. That's what it became. You've started fighting these bigger projects. It's like, well, I'm building a bridge. Yeah, you know, I right. talked to my neighbor. It's like, oh my God. Well, we're just taking on these big projects. That's, That's right. funny. That is funny. Well, yeah. Um, you had to do something, right? Did you write a lot of music? Were you? I'm I'm assuming you're probably I haven't written a lot, and I will admit to you, I was depressed. And, okay. Um, okay. And yeah, stressed. I, I get it. Yes, and not just the pandemic, the politics. So, you know, the whole I thing. I understand. Was, uh, distracting. And um, I, and I, so I did write, you know, at the first week, everybody wrote some pandemic songs and sure. um, that were even related, either related to the pandemic or just for songs that we were, were getting out. Um, yeah. I unfortunately don't feel like I've been creative enough. And I think, though, that that light at the end of the tunnel is drawing me back into the creative mode that and the you know the the lessening and for me of the of the political tension sure. i think that um there's a little bit of bandwidth uh available now <laughs> a little bit <laughs> of bandwidth creative action I, I like that a little bit more bandwidth that's i'm gonna steal that that's that's funny <laughs> i like that uh yeah i mean so you do feel better i i for one personally feel so much better with the transition politically uh i, I you know it went from i was almost like constantly at defcon 5 it felt like emotionally for so long where it just dropped off almost like a cliff you know you know when you're walking on the beach and you're in the ocean and you're kind of just walking out you ever hit one of those steep where it just like goes off you're yeah. like oh my gosh that's what it felt like i'm like but but back to zero back to normal i yeah. felt great honestly for the last month or so um or longer 
to be honest with you. Um, you know, yeah, more hopeful, more. Yeah, absolutely. So I yeah, get it. I know. Well, we've got a lot it. to do. We got a lot of, of progress to make. Sure. It's certainly not uh, a slam dunk that, yeah. uh, but at least we, I feel like Some we've relief. got responsible people in important places. And I, uh, I agree. We're just yeah. better off as a, as a society. Sure. No, totally agree. Um, you know what? I wanted to talk to you about uh, New Orleans a little bit here, of course, New Orleans, uh, beautiful city. You know, I know it's outside of Texas, but look, Texans love New Orleans. OK, so many people go to New Orleans all the time uh, from Texas, of course. And it's just such a unique city, period. Just not even if you've traveled and been around the world, you find that New Orleans. Wow, this is actually a very unique city, not just, you know, to America. Uh, but what I found interesting about you know, well, Mardi Gras, uh, for instance, um, was that I was looking up Mardi Gras in New Orleans and it, it didn't even start really in New Orleans. It kind of started in Galveston. What do you know about this? I, I, I'm, you know, it's a oh, podcast. I'm, I'm curious. There, yeah, there's a there's a lot of back and forth and, and discussion about that. Um, Mobile has a hand in that, too, you know. Oh, they, really? Oh, oh, I didn't yeah, read Mobile. that. OK. Wow. Mobile has a, thinks they started it too, <laughs> and uh, you know then there are the it. huge Caribbean carnivals sure. that have been going on Trinidad and and Rio and uh, any well place, that's true these Catholic societies any any place that that festival a, right is that what you t you're talking about like a festival that sort of thing yeah a carnival yeah and, carnival um, but the, it's about Fat Tuesday it's about yeah the day before Lent starts and it's throwing that big party. Yeah. So any place that was maybe Hispanic uh, or French um, would have, Let's have a celebrated carnival, that. Yeah. that last yeah. big party. And so that's what, uh, sure. like I said, there are a lot of places who claim to have started it. Interesting. But uh, New Interesting. Orleans in, in this country, <laughs> New Orleans is the one that perfected it. That absolutely no one could argue that. Right. That is it goes hand in hand. New Orleans, Mardi Gras. I mean, that's like, you know, hand in hand. Same with like blues. Right. Jazz. I mean, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, down in Cajun country uh, around Lafayette, out in the out in the country, like in Eunice and Ville Platte and places like that, they have their own carnival, their own Mardi Gras celebration. They call it the Courier. And people dress up in these wild patterned fabric uh costumes with with these interesting masks that they make out of out of screen and they paint on them They're, i've actually got one right over there oh wow i don't um, i don't know if i ever heard of this maybe i have it they ride their, oh. they ride horses or in modern day they get them in, or, or they get in wagons and now a truck and they go around they go from house to house and they beg for a chicken to put in the big <laughs> gumbo that they're going to cook at the end of the ride ah. and sometimes the housewife will come out and just throw a live chicken out in the yard <laughs> and then you got to go catch the chicken <laughs> wow oh i love yeah. traditions wow that's great i don't know if i ever heard that that's pretty cool yeah that's pretty cool wow that is that's pretty crazy what what are some of the most exciting mardi gras memories you've had throughout the years i'm sure you've had many one of my first memories was uh, and i was probably five years old oh wow and i was sitting on my daddy's shoulders at a mardi gras parade in new orleans with what was my halloween costume that year which was a skeleton costume okay and i remember being at a parade on daddy's shoulders watching the floats go by i remember that when the beads were really thin, thin ja glass. They were Japanese or, or I think made, you know, just the, the finest glass and strung on a real string. So because my grandmother lived in New Orleans, one of my grandmothers. So we were there. That's where we went on hol holidays and vacations and uh, and for Mardi Gras every once in a while. <laughs> and um, my cousin who was there, you know, we'd take all the beads that we collected and we cut the strings and and save the beads in shoe boxes. And then on rainy days, which is fairly frequent in New Orleans, we would get a needle and thread and we'd restring the beads 
to our own design and make wow make necklaces like that. Wow, that's cool. Wow, so, amazing. And then I, I went to Mardi Gras. I can remember one when I'm, you know, 13 or 14, maybe going to parades with my cousin. Um, I was still 17 and had started college yeah. my freshman year when we went, a bunch of girls went to Mardi Gras from LSU to yeah. New Orleans for Mardi Gras. <laughs> my first band played every night of carnival, Friday, wow. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday and uh, at a club a on lot. Decatur Street. Yeah. Wow, that's a called, lot. Called The Bank at the time. Ooh, The Bank. Uh, and then just a few years, well, some years ago now, <laughs> because it, the video originally came out on videotape, uh, <laughs> I took the band down there and a video crew. Was, that would be early 90s. And uh, we videotaped our trip down. Yeah. Walking around in New Orleans, going to parades and playing five different clubs. Five songs on on the thing from five different clubs. Wow, wow, that is great. Is that so? Can people find that video online? Yeah, they can, and it's called uh, "Big Shots, Stew Pots, and Zulu Queens." Boom! There you go, folks. Google it. I'm sure it's it's out there. Yeah, awesome. look up Marsha Bald Mardi Gras. I bet you Man. find it. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's great. I mean, yeah, like I said, Mardi Gras is such a, um, you know, just such a big part of the city. I mean, right. It's, it's just such a big part of the well, city. New Orleans and New Orleans music. It's, you know, like I said my grandmother lived there. It was my mother's mother. My mother started out life there until she was six, yeah. went back there to go to business school. When she finished high school, um, we always went there. It's, you know, it's my other home. And uh, yeah. although I've never lived there, I've rented briefly there, but when we were spending so much time there to play music, but, um, but it's my home, it's my other home. And, That's awesome. and, and I'll tell you this too, we don't have a date set, but it's going to be the first trip I make out of town. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I That's gotta amazing. Go. <laughs> I gotta I, go. I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> I got. <laughs> Speaking of hungry, I saw on your website you have this uh, emergency. This is the first time I ever seen something like this. Emergency gumbo recipe. Yeah. Love. Uh, oh, it was so awesome. It was so. <laughs> uh, it was so awesome. So people can check this out. It's on your website. Go to marshallball.com and there's an emergency. It's a great. You even go into detail about. Honestly, by the end of it, you've featured three different ways to make it, to be, yeah. to be honest, with you, which is cool. I like that uh, yeah. appro approach to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's talk a little food here. Let's talk about uh, well, this gumbo. I'll tell you that recently, for, for our holiday show, um, I'm part of a nonprofit called Home, uh, Housing Opportunities for Musicians and Entertainers. Well. And we pay rent for... Austin area musicians who are over 55 years old and low income and in need. And often our clients are also dealing with health, health problems too. So, wow, that's amazing. and so to raise money, of course, the pandemic has made all of that strange, but yeah. what we found, what I have found is that you can have an event now and do it on a virtual platform. And actually rather than reach the 300 people you could put in a club, you reach a thousand people all over the world. Yep. hundred percent. And so I'm sure that when we can play live, we're going to be still using the virtual platform to, to yeah. promote our, our nonprofit, but this one to set us apart from um, the typical song after song fundraisers that we're all kind of exhausted about. Um, we called it home cooking for the holidays. Love and that. we added the food element to that. Oh, wow. So, I learned how to use whatever I did, iMovie or one of those <laughs> things. And um, I compressed the process of making that emergency gumbo into four minutes of video. Wow. And that's, that, that's on the show. And then I, you know, and then I sang. Shelly King did a, a chicken pot pie. That's Delbert McClinton's favorite dish. And then virtually handed it to him. 
<laughs> before he sang his song. Lisa Loeb cooked uh, basically leftover nachos where, in which she cleaned out her refrigerator <laughs> and put it all on chips with some, some uh, cheese and jalapenos on top. The cleanup. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. So it, it's a fun, it's actually still up on our website, on our home Austin website. That's awesome. Wow. But uh, so if you wanted, if the recipe is not enough on my website, you can uh, you can go look at the video and learn it there. Yeah, <laughs> I love I love combining food. I mean, that's food is my that's my arena. You know, that that's me. That's my arena. So I well, love the I, idea I of, of music. I, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love uh, the, the idea of combining music and food. Honestly, that's something we wanted to do for the podcast in some way when when it comes about. I mean, originally before COVID, we had this idea of doing a live podcast where we would have, a you know, an artist come out and we would do food at the same. You know, I would do like a food demo right as we do the podcast and then he does a song. We talk about we sort of mix the two I and I, you know, great idea. We've talked about it for a long time. My husband and I always thought that was a good idea, but well, look, uh, when things start <laughs> opening up, maybe we'll try to come together. You know, that's what I do. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll, maybe we can figure something out, um, you know, and especially if we can help somebody at, at the same time and help some people. We're all about that. We would love to partner with, you know, a nonprofit and uh, do something like, yeah, right. for sure. You're hundred percent. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. This is amazing. Look at this. See, these things happen for a reason. But I love the idea of combining food and music. I think food and music, the creation of them have so much in common. I really yeah. do. Right. Do you feel that way when you cook, well, when you make now something? Now you're back to talking about where I'm from. Now you're talking about New Orleans again. <laughs> That's right. That, and Lafayette, you know, and, and then Austin. I mean, when you say Austin to anybody, they're going to either say Tex-Mex or barbecue. That's right. That's right. And we're very, very tied in. And, and not only that, I mean, Austin now is so loaded up with incredible restaurants and chefs. Oh. And, and, you know, during yes. this recent freeze and this really rough time for a lot of people, I don't know if anybody stepped up faster and more than the chefs and the restaurants. Yeah. They just did everything in the world. They were cooking hundreds, thousands of meals. Yeah. And delivering them or making them available. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, right. you're right. You're right. That is amazing. Well, that's uh that's what we know to do. You know, that's just it's sort of we know how to feed people. Uh, we can't do much else. We can we <laughs> well, can feed we can feed you. Music. <laughs> yeah, we you do what you do. It's like, look, we can't pull your car out of a ditch. Okay, we can't clear this highway. We can't do. You know what I mean? We can't do medical yeah. attention. We can't save lives. Well, you know, in some ways, giving a yes, meal, you do. meal, <laughs> giving a meal. You know, yeah. yeah I guess yeah. you're right. Uh, it, you're right uh, in in that sense. Uh, but yeah, you know, providing a meal and and chefs are a good one is good about being cost effective about it as well right it's what they know they, yeah. they could do it they could do it much easier and much better and uh, i always think of jose andres he's a very famous spanish chef he that guy gives so much food and helps so many people it's uh, it's honestly it's mind-blowing how he even does it how he even has the time to even do his businesses and anything else i mean i don't get i don't understand it yeah I, i'm blown away i'm blown away by people's use of time some people, oh, right? You too. see them, right? You're just like, where did you, how do you, I, I barely have time to walk my dogs in the morning. How? I know. Uh, right? I know, I know people crazy. who are who are running big businesses on the boards of more than one important nonprofit, uh, volunteering in another area, <laughs> raising families. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, and have ni and have neat houses too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> And, and when you meet them, they seem like they got it all to get right. Like they're happy that this like, OK, you know, I don't, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I'm inspired by a lot of people to me be, too. to be honest with you. That's how I look. I don't look at it like, oh, forget them. You know, that, that. I'm more inspired by people like, oh, I want to. How do you do that? Let, let, you know, help me uh, figure yeah. that out. You know, yeah, that's because uh, as you get older, I think time management becomes something you you took for granted when you were younger. Right. And then as you get older, it just becomes a different thing. A year goes by much faster the older you are, you get well, than and, when you're and younger. Well, when you reach a certain point, you start thinking, I really only have this many good years. 
And uh, I mean, I mean you have to be real, happy, right? That's yeah, a happy thought, but it's a real thought. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and and so everything that you do, you have to think that well, I'm gonna, you know, I, I if I'm gonna ever do this, I'm gonna do it now. Yeah. So. You know, wow. You know, I had this question. It's so crazy. We're talking about this because. It's, it's perfect. It's like you segued for me perfectly. Honestly, I don't think you meant to. But, you know, I was thinking, you know, all the nominations, all the awards, like all the Hall of Fames you're a part of. I mean, you just have such an amazing career. You really have, Marsha. You know, when you look back, do you do you have like regrets in the sense of things you didn't do or things maybe you did that you wish you hadn't or or does that even happen or do you just not even go there? I don't know. Curious. Well, um, I was just talking to the bass player in that first band I was in, Freedom and the Fire Dogs, the oh, first wow. band in Austin. Wow. And uh, we were talking about what probably would be one of my best or most uh, regretful professional decisions, which was that we had an opportunity to sign a record deal with Jerry Wexler. Wow. And I didn't sign it. Wow. I, I refused. I, I was the holdout. And oh, you know, everyone else like wanted it. Oh, hmm? Everyone yeah, else wanted it. Still, okay. Those guys still talk to me. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. There's a, uh, you know, for one thing, I'm not sure why they didn't, you know, get together and, and beat me up about it. You know, tell me, no, this is, you know, we're going here, but, um, so why'd you say no? Why, why, what were your reasons? Were, well, you know? I read the contract. We couldn't find a lawyer to, to negotiate for us. It didn't seem like that big a deal. I was, I was a combination of, of too much insecurity and too much confidence at the same time. Wow. And uh, whatever that yeah. bubbled up into was me thinking, no, I, I don't know. It was stupid. Yeah. And the funny thing was Jerry Wexler and I stayed friends until the end of his life. He never, he, did, he always teased me about it. <laughs> but, uh, wow. So there was, there's that. Um, wow. Otherwise, you know, I've been so fortunate. I've, I've, I've been lucky at every turn in that uh, musically, personally, professionally, I've just, I, I, it's just been a gift to me. And one of the best things about my life is that, you know, I'm, I'm successful to a certain extent and, uh, but I'm not necessarily a household word, but I also have a family. I also married and have children and grandchildren now. And so in that sense, I feel like I have it all. Wow. And if I'd had to make a decision one way or another, I think of friends of mine who, who either through choice or through chance didn't have that sure. opportunity. And, um, I'd rather be where I am. Yeah. Great outlook. Love that outlook. So yeah. That's awesome. That's amazing. Wow. Any, any, think any other regrets? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a couple, but let's don't go there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I get it. I mean, that's that's any one of us. Right. Uh, for sure. Uh, you know, I try not to focus on those things. I don't know about you. Right. I just uh, let's what's what's coming up. Uh, uh, but it's not too bad to think, well, I won't let that mistake happen again. Right. Uh, that's different, I guess. But um, I don't know, Marshall, what do you think? You feel like playing a, a tune here? I feel like maybe that's. Some people call me party dog. Some people call me lucky dog. Cause I like to get dressed up and have a party on. Oh yeah, on the land and sea. If there's a party, that's where I'll be. Well, you people try to keep my time. Can't keep it going till I get tired. La-ti-da, la-ti-da Yes, it's the party sound La-ti-da, ooh-la-la Well, now everybody party now Well, you puzzle over every move 
You try to figure what's best to do You think you made it if you got enough Fortune or fame, oh yeah Where have the happiest I've ever been It's when my feet are on the road to sin I had my head so high I don't even know to be ashamed Woo, la ti da It's a party sound La-dee-da La-dee-da Well, now everybody Party now Woo, Party Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my. Ooh, la, la. Oh my God. Oh my God, Marsha. You can just jump on a piano and do that. <laughs> well, not all that well as it turned out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's like That's another I, thing about taking a year off. You know You feel you feel a little rusty. Interesting. I don't know what's gonna happen when I go back and and I mean for a while and every once in a while I'll come out here and I'll play for an hour just steady, you know, play a set. Yeah. Play yeah. an hour or an hour and a half or something, just because what if when we get started, I, I poop out? <laughs> what if I don't have my, my, my upper body strength? You know, we really, I mean, I've got friends who've lost their calluses. Oh, wow. You're oh. right. The callus. Oh, my. You, you, you take years building that up. <laughs> and right? just a few months wow. to let it go. Wow. That is so interesting. This is these little details, you know, that people right don't know about. Wow. That's so interesting. I mean, look, you sounded great. If that's you, Rusty, I mean, holy <laughs> cow. That's like, no wonder you've, I mean, wow, Marsha. That's I, I just, I'm so amazed by people with a talent like that that can just, you know, go to town. So amazing. Wow. Oh, thank that, you. that might, that might be the best performance we've ever had on the podcast. I think. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, that it's was the only so one you've had on the piano anyway. <laughs> It, that was just so good. That was so, your voice is so amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Your voice is amazing. Do cool. people ask you to do their voicemails for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would. If they, give the money, if they give the money to home. Yeah. <laughs> if they give the money to home. I love that answer. Wow. What a great, what a great answer. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Marsha, well, is there anything we didn't talk about that uh, I didn't bring up? I want to, I, I don't want to leave I anything have... out. I think I shoehorned a whole lot of stuff. We haven't talked about what we're going to do. I guess we have a little bit going to go out on the road again. Yeah. Um, and try to, yep. and now that I know I'm going to be working again, as I said, there's a light at the end of this tunnel and, and I don't want to go back out there and play the same set I was playing a year ago, a year and a half ago when, you know, when I stopped, I, I'm going to have to have something to show for this. So 
<laughs> um, I think I need to to rev up that creative engine. Yeah, there you go. Some new stuff. So people got some new stuff to look forward to. That's great. Hey, yeah. look at that. If it got you going on some new stuff, I think the fans are going to be uh, happy for that. You know, I actually have a, a great way we could we could end this here. Um, OK, I, it's Women's History Month. So I was going to ask you if there was any particular woman that you'd like to mention or highlight. Well, um, I've got a song that's the title song to my last record, my or my the one, not my last record, <laughs> but, <laughs> but my most recent, not so recent record. Um, the record, the song is called Shine Bright. At the end, I talk about a lot of people who are important to me. And uh, I mentioned Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I mentioned Ann Richards. I mentioned uh, Irma Thomas. I mentioned uh, Rosa Parks. And um, gosh, I mean, I could go on on Molly Ivins. Um, oh wow yeah we had uh the director of their janice ingle of their uh, documentary yes oh good good yeah, yeah. great great so, woman um, both yeah, of them the the suffragettes you know wow. who carried us a hundred years ago when we when we couldn't vote and what because we you know anyway <laughs> to know our places Listen, um, i i get it it's ridiculous uh, <laughs> elizabeth warren yeah. Wow. All amazing yeah. women. Absolutely. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. That's my girl. I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. I'm 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 a Latin American as well. And uh, anytime I see Latin Americans like succeeding like like they do, I'm, I'm inspired by them. And uh, she inspires me. And, and honestly, shout out to her. She raised over $5 million for us after this freeze. Yes. So s say what you will about her Texans, regardless, <laughs> uh, seriously, say I what agree. you will. I agree. She, she brought us money and she helped people in need. So, you know, as a Texan, you have to respect that no matter what, look, uh, our other, our other out. Senator was flying to Cancun with his dog yeah. or whatever. So, you know, yeah. Don't get me started on that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? You need to look up that song. That's a great song by, yes. uh, by Rodney Crowell. Don't get okay. me started. Don't get me Don't started. Get me started. <laughs> it's a great song and it's political. He's got um, some great political songs. And that's, that's one of them. And Sex and Gasoline is another one. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm all about these. Yeah. I'm all about he's, a, he's a great Texan. Right on. Right on. Yes. There's so many great Texans. It's another great thing I learned about this podcast when we started it. Well, let's let's bring on Texans and celebrate Texans in every, you know, field. It's like it's en it's endless. There's so many amazing people that yeah. come out of Texas or run through Texas or have a connection to Texas or something. You know, it's it's beyond amazing. Yeah. To be honest with you. There's something in the water here. There's something <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Something afraid, going yeah. on. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good and bad, I think, sometimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, listen, Marsha, I had such a ball. I, I got to tell you and again, I, that, you know, I'm going to say it, that best performance we've had on the park. It was so amazing. Um, thank I, you, thank so you for much. that. No, no, I mean that. And thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, well, you, you gave know. me heart. I'll, I'll keep on then. <laughs> Yes. Yes, girl. That's what okay, I'm about. I'll keep going. I'll, oh, please. Yes. Let me, me as the lowly po podcast host here saying that is really what what will get you going. Right. I'm sure. Uh, uh, no. I wonder. I wonder where I put my band. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious. I love it. Yeah. It's such a great sense of humor, Marsha. Uh, listen. Uh, you know, I wish you the best through everything. Again, like you said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I completely agree with that. And, uh, you know, my best to use uh, your and your family and everybody. Thank and uh, again, thank you so much for your for your time today. This was awesome. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for doing it. Awesome. Talk to you well, soon. Uh, yes, I hope. Listen, okay. like I said, when everything opens back up, we'll send out another email and see if we can work something out of doing some food and music and and helping people out. We're all about that. You know, you know, my husband is the ambassador of Chile, huh? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, really? You know, uh, Wick Fowler's Two Alarm Chili? You know that chili mix? Wick Fowler's Two Alarm Chili is in the package yeah. in the grocery store? Yeah. That was his company. 
Wow. Yeah. We could, uh, we could tag team you. Every, lo- every, every time there's a cold snap, we, we have to, we elbow each other out. Cause I'll say it's a good gumbo day. He says, it's a good chili day. And we, we elbow each other. Out. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? You, you don't have to choose. Yeah. I'm no, all about just, both. Right. <laughs> when, um, after hurricane Katrina, a bunch of, uh, New Orleans musicians came here for some for, you know, weeks, some for months sure. and some for a few years. And one of the ones yeah. who stayed for several years was Cyril Neville, the youngest okay. of the Neville brothers and wow. his wife, Danielle. And, and they put their kids in school here and they went ahead and let them graduate from high school here. And uh, Cyril's wow. the one who said that uh, when they came over here and, and started mixing with the musicians, it was the, the chili was, was, I'm saying the chili was spilling over into the gumbo. (laughs) I love that. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, of course, they're both amazing. You know, you get the right one. (laughs) Right. You can have you can have bad gumbo and you can have bad chili, you know. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay warm. And uh, thank you again, Marshall. We'll talk soon. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Until next time.